Well, hello friends. Welcome back to Browser Hacking. Today, we are gonna work on the CSS implementation in Serenity's browser, and uh, we're gonna implement some overflow property stuff. So um, let's make a quick test page just to review the overflow property. So um, we'll make something like o.html and of course, the overflow property determines what to do with content that spills out of a block in CSS. So um, if we have something like a div, um, which we'll call foo, and then we'll fill that with a bunch of nonsense like that. And um, then we will give that thing a little bit of style. Say something like um, overflow hidden, right? And maybe we will do something like this. We'll give it a border so we can see where the border is. And um, we'll give it a height so that uh, we don't have infinite height. And why not a width as well? Okay. So if we just open this thing in uh, Firefox, we'll see here that the overflow, um, the overflowing content inside of this div is clearly hidden, right? And um, another option would be visible. I think that's the default. So here it just kind of spills out. Um, and the size of the element is still 100 by 100, but you still have, you still see the content here, right? And you can select it and interact with it and everything. Um, and then there are a couple of other ones like scroll, which gives you the ability to scroll here. Uh, and I think there's like clip, which I don't recall exactly what's the difference between clip and hidden. I think it has something to do with um, programmatic scroll or something like that. But um, today I think we're going to focus on visible and hidden. So I guess we can make two of these. So we'll call it O visible and O hidden, say. Um, and we'll do something like that. And then we can just duplicate it. And now we have two of them. And that's kind of annoying when they're next to each other like that. So how about we just say display inline block instead? Yeah, that's a interesting property. So for, um, for line layout purposes, the overflowing content still pushes down the line. Okay, I, I don't know if we'll implement that um, behavior today, but we can certainly um, we can certainly do the sort of the clipping behavior. So let's let's just get started on that. And I'm just thinking, should we do something with the scroll as well? I guess we can leave the scroll one as a bonus. Um, although mm, I, I'm not going to have time to do all of that today. So let's just do these two. Um, so first thing we'll do is just, um, of course, boot up and take a look at what it would look like right now. So uh, here is where we are currently. We, um, we parse the property, the, the overflow property, but we don't do anything with the value. So it's just sitting here unused um, on these elements. So um, this is what you get. So let's see exactly what it is that we want to do. So I think um, if overflow is visible, then we don't need to do anything. But if it is hidden, then I guess we should do a, we can do a paint time clip where when we're painting this uh, thing right here, uh, and we're about to paint the sort of the content inside of this box, then we could check if overflow is hidden. And if so, we would just clip to the padding box of this block. So uh, I think that would make sense. So let's try that out. Um, 
So when we're about to paint a box, then wait, how does this work again? So um, let's just quickly take a look at the layout tree. Uh, oh, right, this doesn't work in multi-process mode at the moment, um, but we can see it here. Okay, so it's just a plain block box with a bunch of lines in it, so that's nothing special. Um, okay, so uh, we have a block box. And um, painting in LibWeb is recursive, so it starts at the... Um, I mean, it's recursive and it goes in phases. So there are all these different phases, and uh, we start at the root of the stacking context tree every time, and then we recurse through the layout tree, and um, first we paint the backgrounds, then the um, foregrounds, then the borders, or uh, whatever the phase order is. It's right here. Background, border, foreground, focus outlines, and overlays. Um, but anyway, that, that's just details. So point is, we are here, we are in block box paint, which means that we have recursed all the way to a block level element and we want to paint it. Um, and this here is where we would paint all of the line boxes inside. So in our case, all of these line boxes here, right? So before we paint them, we need to clip if we have um, overflow hidden. So I'm thinking here we would apply a clip, but we'll make a helper for this, like should clip overflow maybe. Um, if so, then context painter save, and then we can restore after after we painted all the children. So that just, um, if you apply a clip or a transform or something to the painter, then save and restore will just, um, will be like nothing happened. So that, that, that these uh, operations play really well with recursive algorithms, because it's like a push state, pop state kind of thing. Um, okay, so if we should clip overflow, then save it, and then let's clip it to, um, we should, uh, well, we should just clip to the padding rectangle of this box. So, um, context, painter, add clip rack, padded rect. Um, and that's a floating point rect and painter is a integer space thing, so we have to do enclosing int rect. Okay. So, wait, would that just... Is that what we need? And then should clip overflow. It's like, um... Should clip overflow. Um... Computed values, overflow. Oh, okay, right. So we have X overflow and Y overflow. Um, so I think I'm just going to combine those right now and we'll leave a fix me. Um, we can leave a fix me here about this, like um, handle, uh, clip, uh, overflow, X. Um, or overflow y being different values. Yeah. So right now we'll, we'll just uh, pretend that they are identical values. So um, we should clip overflow if the overflow x value is, see this overflow, wait, visible hidden scroll auto and clip. I feel like visible is the only one that we need to um, not clip. So let's just say if 
uh, if these are neither of these are visible, then we will clip the overflow. And then let's just add here, like um, should clip overflow. I was thinking about putting this in a um, base class, but it's probably fine here. Okay. Well, that's that's nice. So we're not doing the thing where we um, where line layout takes this into account. Um, that will be a bit more complicated because um, line layout. If we show the line box borders, then um, these two inline blocks here they're sort of um, they're placed together on a vertical line, right? And they're both aligned to the bottom of that line, but the bottom is pushed down by the height of these two inline blocks and um, I think when we when we push down the baseline of the uh, of the line box we need to take overflow into account but I'm, I'm not quite sure um, how we should do that so we're just gonna skip over that one right now and I think we'll commit this and then maybe we can look at scroll as well since this was so easy <laughs> Uh, oh, and people have been telling me to use the uh, commit interface here in C line, so let me try that out. Um, web web. Uh, clip. Um, clip inline children. Um, inline inline children of block level elements um, overflow um, uh, when overflow is not visible this is um, a first step towards CSS overflow support. Um, it doesn't behave correctly with regards to um, with regards to uh, over vertical overflow. Um, Um, affecting the baseline of a line box. <sighs> uh, vertical overflow in an inline block affecting the baseline of a line box. But it does um, work for basic uh, overflow hiding. Yeah, um, that's that's not a great comment. <laughs> Let's start over. Um, so we now apply a paint time clip um, to the padding rect of a block box. Um, before um, painting its inline level children. Um, this sort of uh, cover this covers some of the behavior we want from overflow hidden, etc. Uh, but uh, is far from a complete solution. Yes. Okay, that was a better commit message. One to do. Okay. Well, let's. Interesting. And then there was nothing. All uh, right then. That's weird. Oh, that fixed me that I added here, right? Oh, I see. Well, that's nice that it was actually <laughs> asking me. I guess if you have something asking you like this, then um, the fact that it polls you about it when you're about to commit, that's really neat. 
because that would kind of give you the confidence to put fix me's and then you have some some confidence that you're not going to forget about it when you commit interesting anyways we're going to leave that fix me in so uh, did i commit this now no it's still here or wait am i on the right branch yes it is here okay <laughs> Yeah, I, I am still uh, learning the C Lion UI, but um, the commit functionality, the, the git functionality is, is really, really interesting. So I can tell that I need to get more familiar with it. Um, so bear with me while I learn. Okay, and then let's look at scroll also. So if we just make one of these O scroll. Then what would that look like in Firefox scroll? <laughs> Let's just see here. Right, so it would be like that. And I can't really draw a scroll bar um, in the web engine at the moment, but what we could do is we could let you just wheel up and down. So let's just see what this looks like now. I think well, now we'll just clip it, right? Yeah, so now it just clips, but what if we could wheel up and down here to actually scroll this? That would be really cool. Um, we need somewhere to store the scroll offset. So I guess we can store it with a block box. Um, I think we'll, we'll just put that here. So like float scroll offset. We'll call it like the overflow scroll offset or something like that. Um, Okay, and then when we paint, um, after we clip, so we've clipped it to the padded rect, and then what if we just, what if we just scroll by the scroll offset here? Oh, this uh, scroll offset. Yeah, I'm, I'm stuck in this way of thinking that, um, Overflow is a one axis thing, but it needs to be a two axis thing. So it's a float point, really. Okay, and then we will context painter translate by the negative scroll offset to int. Wait, does that work? Does it have to, to type? To type int, okay. Two type is a bit of a strange name for that, but I guess that's what we have. Okay. So then we just need a, a way to actually get wheel events to this thing. So do we have events here? I think we have some kind of mouse events. We use that to implement buttons. So uh, mouse events, right. But we don't actually have a wheel event, so we'll have to implement that. Um, wants mouse events right so we'll we'll add a handle mouse wheel um or handle wheel wheel is probably good enough so we have wheel of mouse wait they're called mouse wheel event okay okay so mouse wheel then fine um and what do these look like they're just like that that's fine then who calls these bad boys? It's the event handler, I would expect. Yeah. So event handler is the um, f sort of the web page layer object that receives these. So the web engine, Blue Web has all these layers, right? So we have the widget layer. Uh, which is the out of process web view or the in process web view, uh, depending on which GUI widget you're using. So this one is a multi-process solution. This one uh, does everything in the same process and we're favoring this for everything, basically. I don't even know if we're gonna keep this one. Um, right now we have both. So there's the widget layer on top. That's just a GUI widget. 
um, GUI widget stuff. And then right below that is the web page, page layer. Um, I guess you could call it also like the frame layer, which is where you have the uh, web page class, which has a main frame, which is a web frame. And then inside of the web frame are, um, could be like a frame tree, right? Like if you have um, many frames or if you have iframes and stuff like that, then there's a main frame, which is the parent frame of the page. And then um, you can have many frames inside of it. And then below the frame layer is the um, document layer, which is the, the DOM basically. So here you have web document, which has, um, nodes and stuff in it. Um, so these are like the, the three main layers in terms of um, abstraction. And then there are like various uh, things, other namespaces around here, but these are the three main layers to know about. So there's the widget and the page layer, frame layer, uh, and the DOM. <laughs> I need to come up with final names for these things, but Basically, this guy here never talks to this guy. He always talks to this guy, and this guy talks to this guy. And when bounce events come in, they come into the GUI widget. And then they go from the GUI widget, he sends them down to the frame. And then the frame has a thing called an event handler. So GUI events, mouse events, key events, stuff like that, they go into the frame's event handler. And then from the event handler, he decides uh, where in the DOM or in the layout tree or whatever, where to actually send the event. And then once he gets some response or something, he sends it back up to the widget layer. So anyways, uh, just a quick primer on that. So now here we are in the event handler class in the um, page layer. And we're just gonna um, we're just gonna do this because it will be very similar to the existing ones. And let's see if we don't have a layout tree. Can return false. And then we need to do a hit test. Yeah, just this stuff right here. So essentially. We do a hit test on the layout tree to see if the mouse wheel event is above any interesting layout node. And then if we hit one and it happens to say true, if we ask it, do you want mouse events, then we will call handle mouse wheel on that particular um, layout node. And here we, we really need to include the wheel delta because that's the defining attribute of a wheel event. So I guess here we can say like return true, meaning that it was actually handled by somebody. Um, in most cases, that would just not, not be handled. But if you're wheeling over somebody who cares about wheel events, okay. And then, so let's now go and look at whoever calls these things. So. That would be, um, oh, for subframes. Okay, so uh, let's just ignore subframes right now and go up to the page class. So here we need to do a little bit of duplication. So page is this guy right here who has been receiving the event from the widget layer. So as you can see, he just forwards to the main frames uh, event handler as we talked about. The wheel delta is a um, like a small number that represents like how many how many notches I guess on the mouse wheel that you flipped up or down. So that's what we are forwarding to um, to the API that we're calling. Okay. And 
And who calls page handle mouse up? Well, that would be the widget. So either it's in process web view right here. So we will need to um, also implement mouse wheel event, GUI mouse event. Yeah. And then it will look very similar to this, right? Just uh, forwarding it to the page layer. Including the wheel delta and then calling up to our base class. And then uh, the tricky part comes on the outer process web view part um, and the multi-process mode because here it's a bit more involved. Like we receive an event in the widget layer, um, but the widget layer talks to the page layer through IPC. So here is an IPC boundary in the outer process stuff um, right here. So it's a bit bit more complicated. So we have to actually send an IPC message. It's not that bad. Um, we just send a mouse wheel. Make sure to include the wheel delta. And we have to update our IPC protocol to also have a mouse wheel message. Where we will include the wheel delta. Cool. And if we recompile here right quick, then this thing should show up in the code completion, hopefully. Um, what did I forget? I forgot to use the wheel delta. Yeah, right. So we have to, <laughs> we have to actually pass that on to handle mouse wheel. That's fine. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. And I guess we want a block box to um, say that he wants the mouse events. Wants mouse events, const override, return true. And handle mouse wheel. Um, okay, I already forgot what that one looked like. Like that, okay. So, what are we going to do with this thing? Yes, we don't care about the buttons or the modifiers, just the wheel delta and the position. And the position is not super interesting either. So uh, if we have overflow, at this point, we really would like to know how much overflow we have. But since we don't know, we haven't computed that, let's just, um, let's just do something like this. Um, right, it's multi multi-axis. So let's just um, move by zero on the x-axis. So no horizontal scroll right now because I, I don't have an API for that. Um, so we'll only let it scroll the y-axis. And then uh, I can compile here in C-Lion, but I can't actually run in C-Lion because um, the run command requires to use sudo because we need root access to build a disk image. And if I use that in CMake, I have to type my password here and then uh, it shows the password while I'm typing it. So <laughs> it's a little bit silly, but I've, I've filed a bug about it. So, um, oh, wait, wait, wait. We forgot to implement a bunch of things on the auto process web view side. So we did, 
not that thing, out of process web view. Sending the mouse wheel thing, but the web content process client connection class needs to have a handler for the newly added mouse wheel request. So that can go right here. Yeah, so as you can see here on the web content server side, we receive these messages. We get, uh, now we're on the server side on the, on the other side of the IPC boundary. And from here, uh, it's just a simple step to get to the page layer. So uh, once we cross the boundary, we are able to talk to the page. Um, at which point we will say handle mouse wheel. And hopefully this has a wheel delta on the message. Okay, so that was a little bit of a little bit of setup, but oh, hmm, interesting. Oh wait, it doesn't cause a um, a repaint. Hmm, I'm able to scroll it a little bit. That's so strange. <laughs> um, I don't know what I did to make it scroll. Let's see. It was a bit flaky. Um, block box. We should definitely repaint when this happens. So if uh, if wheel delta is zero, then you know this is a no op. Um, but otherwise, we need to be displayed. So we need to repaint essentially. Hmm. I wonder if we're actually getting here. What is the delta? Oh, it doesn't work if I'm on the um, on the text. It works if I'm outside of the text. It's actually kind of cute. Uh, okay, so wait, how do we make that work if we're hitting the text? Hmm. Wait, so the hit test. Um. I guess we should. Um, We need to do this at a higher level. So we need to scroll the containing block, essentially. So instead of implementing mouse wheel like this, it needs to be, um, let's put it on, I guess we can put it on, on the layout node itself. So, um, Wait, so how do we do that? So, um, in block box, we, um, this can actually be here, but in layout um, node, if we get a mouse wheel here, so then if if we're a block box, then then this thing should have hit us actually. So okay, so we don't need to care about that. So all we need to care about if we have a containing block, um, and if so, then we will just um, call handle mouse mouse wheel on the containing block. Um, which we can't call because we don't have a badge. Um, that's okay though. We'll we'll, we'll fix this up. So um, we'll we'll add something for this block box set or set scroll offset. Let's say. Uh, offset. 
something like that. And then we just yoink these two up to here. And then, um, we can do it this way, set scroll offset. Um, wait, 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 wait. It's not set scroll offset, it's, um, we need a way to get it. So this thing can still work that way. Oh, well, that's so weird. Um, so <laughs> this thing can work the old way, but I, I want to implement it in terms of set scroll offset. Okay, hold on, let me add the API here because this is a bit confusing. So float size, um, or no, no, float point scroll offset. Yeah, and let's rename that to just um, scroll offset like that. And then we'll have that. And then And then if it's a no op, then return. Oh, 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 I didn't do that right. Wait, what's wrong with, oh, it's wrecked. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, right, and then here. Yeah, and then we can do the same thing in layout node. It's a little bit awkward, but maybe it's okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think maybe that's okay. Let's check it out. Well, that didn't work. Still only works if I'm out here. Um, wait, am I not getting this at all? Um, node wheel, let's say containing block is who are you? Just let me see it. Hmm. So we're never getting this. That's quite strange. So what's that about? Um Mouse wheel, uh, let's look at event handler. So we're doing a hit test type exact. And are we just not getting a layout node? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wants mouse events. Oh, that's so annoying. I guess we have to just ignore that. So, okay, so now suddenly everybody wants mouse events for the wheel event. Okay, I think maybe that's, um, we kind of have to do it that way, at least for now. So, still, that works. Um, it does not take that in the scroll offset into account when I'm selecting the text. <laughs> but... That's okay. We don't have to fix all of these things at the same time. It's just uh, it's just cool that we were able to make it scroll at all. So that's awesome. I think, yeah. So we're going to commit this. 
Uh, it's obviously not perfect, but it is good enough for today. So first thing is we're going to add plumbing for the wheel event. So let's see, a whole bunch of things. Um, wheel, wheel, um, think, yeah, we can just add all of that actually. This is a fair amount of boil boilerplate. Um, and now, now I was committing over here in the terminal. Um, dang it. So I wanted to skip over one part here. It's just, uh, let's just do this for now and the initial commit. Um, mouse wheel events wheel events from um, widget layer to uh, event handler uh, yeah and then we can do that then we'll also add a fix me here and support uh, wheel events in subframes um, yeah because that requires that we uh, do some offset um, translation and stuff. So, okay, wait, let me actually commit over here in C line. So, we added handle mouse wheel. Um, and we're forwarding into the layout node, and there's now a scroll offset on block boxes, which we translate by when we paint um, block level elements that have clipped overflow content. So yeah, okay, so that's cool. Lib web. Um, allow scrolling clipped overflow content with the mouse wheel. Um, this is rather crude, but you can now uh, use the mouse wheel to scroll uh, up and down in block box. Oops! Wait, come back. Um, <laughs> oops, oops, oops. Block level boxes with um, clipped overflowing content. Um, there's no limit to how um, high up or how far you can scroll in either direction since we do don't um, yet track how much overflow there is. But it's a start. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, and here's that fix me to do thing. So let's look at it. Support wheel events and subframes. I'm okay with that. Commit. All right. Cool. So I think um, maybe I will. I will actually. I think we're gonna be done for the day here. Yeah, because I have to go in a couple of minutes. But um, this turned out pretty good. Good start. Uh, nice to be working on some libweb features again. It's been uh, <laughs> it's been a long, long security related rampage lately. So I need to get back into doing some feature work. So this seemed interesting, and I am happy with the results. So very good. Anyways, um, this will be the end of today's video. So. If you made it this far, then I thank you for watching, for hanging out, and I hope that we saw something interesting here today, I, and um, I hope to see you next time. Bye.